Good evening. Hello, welcome to our webinar. And uh, so we are here today. Um, my name is um, yes, we're live from Milan, and my name is Anika, and I have here with me Sean. Um, so whenever you join us, hi, please everyone. say hi. So maybe we can begin with introducing ourselves. Can I? Can we start with Sean? Yes, definitely. My name is Sean. I come from Ireland. I come from the west of Ireland. I have uh, lived and worked in Milan since September, and I work in the school on uh, Via Meravigli with Anika. Yes, and I am originally from Bangladesh, um, and I have been living in Italy for about six years, and I used to live in Malaysia before that. So if you guys are, have just joined us, yeah. uh, please tell us about yourselves, where you're from, where you are at the moment. Yes, where you come from is important today because we're talking about the history of food, as you can see. So the story, the history behind certain dishes, the origins of certain foods, so it's very relevant uh, where you come from when you talk about this, the dishes that are particular of where you come from. So we will be doing a food quiz, talking about famous food origins, and also we will be using passives a lot throughout this focus. You'll see why, you'll see how we use them. So this will be a revision of passives in today's focus all right hey so anyone good. watching please introduce yourselves and we will look at this first slide so we have three questions can you read through these anika yes yeah, sure so number a unique dish dish number one what are the most famous dishes from your region or country? Which is your favorite? What is it made from? Number two, which type of food do you think is most well known around the world? And number three, in your opinion, which country has the best food and why? Oh, some <laughs> risky questions here. <laughs> Controversial, yes. Controversial, very Italian, yeah. Very serious <laughs> discussion. Oh, yeah. We have, oh, uh, we hi, have some comments already. Great. Hmm. Yes, hi, Marta from a little village near Pisa. Elisa from Milan. Which, uh, which school do you go to, Elisa? Are you one of our students? Please, please let us know. I think and, I recognize um, Elisa from Meravigli. You do. If I'm heart. not wrong, I okay, think so. Yeah. Okay, good. So the first question, can you guys answer this in the comments? And we'll answer it ourselves. What are the most famous dishes from your region or country? Which is your favorite? What is it made from? So Anika, I don't know much about the cuisine of Bangladesh. What what are the most famous dishes? Well, it's really similar to Indian food. Mm. Um, so if I have to pick really famous dishes, it would be rice and fish. So oh. there is also an expression for being a very Bangladeshi person means to be Bangladeshi by rice and fish. Okay. It doesn't make much sense in English, but yeah, but there's an expression. Um, they eat a lot of rice and fish. Yes, every day. People eat rice every day there. It's like pasta over here. Yeah. Um, and fish is something very, very popular. Hmm. What kinds um, of fish do you eat? So there is a fish called uh, hilsha. In English, it translates to hilsha, but probably it's not very popular in many European countries. Um mm -hmm. That's the most. And other seafood are also really popular, like shrimps. 
Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and a lot of spices. We do use a lot of spice. I'm not used to it anymore because I haven't mm. been uh, living there for 13 years now. Mm. So <laughs> my tastes have changed. Really? Even just not having it all the time? Yeah, okay. yeah. It's been like 13 years. So yeah. it's been a while. I I'm really, really bad with with spices because mm. Irish cuisine uh -huh. is incredibly even less spicy than Italian cuisine, and Italian cuisine <laughs> is not spicy. <laughs> we don't really? use a, lo a lot of different kinds of seasoning at all. We don't use spices. Um, mm. The typical dishes are usually meat, meat dishes, and potatoes. Potatoes mm. are very mashed potatoes are very signature in Ireland and a lot of things like beef stew, um, mm. ham and cabbage, kind of very heavy food. I, I like the Irish cuisine, but not everyone does. Um, it's not that sophisticated maybe, but I quite, I quite mm. like it. It sounds healthy to me. Yeah. And, um, so, oh, that sounds nice, actually. Um, I like mashed potatoes a lot, um, mm. for example. And uh, do you have any favorites? Yeah, I mean, beef stew, as I said, is um, it's a really, it's a signature in Ireland. And the beef is really good in Ireland. It's particularly mm. high quality. And it's got, you know, carrots and onion, and it's very warming. Because it's so mm. cold in Ireland, of course, that we need it mm -hmm. to warm us up. What are your favorite dishes in Bangladesh? So my very favorite is a uh, hilsha fish, the fish that I was talking to you about. Um, and there are some special fruits that you don't find in other countries very easily. So um, it's not a dish, it's a fruit, which is mango, which I really miss. Oh, yeah. I still love it. Mm. So, but if you're talking about dishes, I think it would be like hill shark fish. Okay, okay, interesting. So we have more people coming in. Great. Hello, Patrick from Mayas Leon. And we have Marta. She says, okay, I'm going to put the comment up here. Uh, a very typical dish of my village is castagnaccio, castagnaccio, a very simple dessert made of chestnuts, chestnuts flour. Chestnut flour um, without apostrophe S. Yes. Wouldn't you say so, um, Sean? Yeah, Chestnut yeah. Flour. It's a type of flour we don't need to say belonging to. There's no need. Water, pine nuts, and rosemary. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Do you want to take this one, Sean? A comment yeah. from Elisa. So Elisa is talking about the famous dishes of Milan which are risotto with zafferano, which is saffron in English. I'll put that in the comments, saffron. And uh, cotoletta and panettone, it is a special, a special bread, a special bread. Really, I prefer the dishes from other regions. My favorite dishes are pizza and lasagna. Yeah, a lot of people aren't so enthusiastic about um, Milanese food, especially other Italians. But I really, really like uh, the food in Milan. Maybe it's because it's it's heavier, like in Ireland. I, I really like um, risotto milanese. Mm -hmm. Do you like Italian food, Anika? Oh, I love Italian food. And actually, I, I used to live in Rome before I moved to Milan, and I think I like Sorry for anyone Milanese, but I really like Rome, Roman food. And oh, no, that's really good. Rome yes. is, uh... But then I don't eat any meat, any more meat. Um, oh. I, I eat fish, though. Uh, so you could say mm -hmm. I've become a pescatarian. Okay, okay. Is this re preference or do you think meat is cruel or what's the reason? Um, so there are two main reasons. The firstly, um, for health because I feel more healthy when I don't eat much meat. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's lighter. And secondly, because I know it's better for the environment. So yeah, definitely. yeah it's a mixture of reasons. So I thought, okay, it's best to leave yeah. it out. Yeah. I've, I've reduced on my meat as well a little bit because mm. of the environment. 
But anyway. Also, what, what really triggered it is that I used to um, go to the mountains uh, sometimes in Valtellina. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever been in kind no. of the north of Milan. Um, so over there, they eat a lot of meat. But then oh. um, I knew a lot of people there. And, the sta and according to statistics, a lot of people were having this uh, health problems. And it was really connected to meat. So, so like, okay. That really triggered me and then uh, triggered the whole idea. So, no, in Ireland, we definitely have big problems with things like uh, cholesterol and heart disease, mm. and which are all I think with eating a lot of meat all the time. But, um, okay. still, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. I'd be interested to know about the food in Leon, Patrick, because I really I love French food. A lot. Mm. I love French food, which Italians don't have a high opinion of French <laughs> food, but I do personally. <laughs> I love French food too. Um, mm. I I had a French friend who told me that I don't know if it's really accurate, but I heard that um, the the main difference between Italian and French food is that there more there's more butter in French food, and instead in Italian food there's more olive oil instead. So. Uh, I think there are other differences. Yeah, I mean, generally French cuisine is kind of creamy, a lot of cream and butter, and mm. less less vegetables, like tomatoes and kind of the fresh vegetables you get here. It's mm. a lot of meat and... Um, but I like, I like French food. I think it's very simple. I like it. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what type of food do you think is most well known around the world? What do you think, Sean? And anyone else watching? Well, I think Italian food is really very famous everywhere. I know in Ireland, every town, every village has an Italian restaurant. Everybody eats pizza, everybody eats pasta. Do you eat mm -hmm. Italian food in Bangladesh, actually? Not really. I mean, if, even if they do have Italian restaurants, um, they would put some spices in. Somehow it will be <laughs> like modified a little bit, and <laughs> which yeah. is not nice. And they do that with every country. For example, I love Thai food a lot. And yeah. I wanted to try um, Thai restaurants here in Milan, and it was a little Italianized. So yeah, I think every country, yeah. like they change the recipes a little bit, but... Yeah, there are Italian restaurants there as well. <laughs> so are there a lot of Italian restaurants in Ireland? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So the last one, in your opinion, which country has the best food and why? I mean, for me, it it's it's between Italy and France. I couldn't I couldn't choose. I like both mm. a lot, as I said. I mean, which do you like? You seem to like a lot of different cuisines. Well, it's a really hard question for me to answer. I don't think I will be able to answer that, to be honest. Uh, because in Europe, I think yeah. French and Italian food are. I, I agree with you. In Europe, French and Italian food are the best. Um, in Asia, I really, really like Thai food mm, and Japanese. I think Japanese food is great. Um, yeah, I would have to choose three. <laughs> okay. Do you have a least favorite cuisine that you don't like? Um, probably not. I, I, I think I happen to think that um, there are different, um, really nice dishes in different cultures, different cuisines. So mm. if you are, um, if you don't try everything, you might be missing out. <laughs> so Marta here has a comment. She thinks, mm. so she says, I think that Italian and French cuisine are famous, but also Oriental cuisine like Japanese, Chinese and Indian. Yeah. Yeah, well, Indian restaurants are everywhere. So I think Indian food mm. is also very famous. Yeah. 
I just, I, you... it's too spicy. I can't eat it. Even here, when it's not mm. as spicy as it is in yeah. India, I'm sure. Mm. I, I just, I, any spice, I cannot. I have no interest. Oh, I totally get me, that. It's totally foreign. I can't. Mm. Yeah. What about Japanese? Though? I quite like, like Japanese. Okay. I do because it's it's not spicy. Um, but I've heard that the sushi here in Milan is not very authentic either, so it's hard to mm -hmm. know what to believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to go to the authentic restaurants. You have to know the right place. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Just, yeah, I Some just... places are. But are there any Irish restaurants here in Milan that you know of? Well, we have Irish pubs uh, all over okay. the world, but they don't really serve food um, and certainly not very traditional food because Ireland is mm -hmm. it's not famous for its food. It generally, I mean, I like the food in Ireland, but it's, it's, you can't compare it to cuisines like Italian or Chinese mm -hmm. or Indian that have such a strong point of view. It, it's, it's quite a generic cuisine, I think, in many ways. Okay. Hmm. Okay, great work, everyone. We'll go on to the next slide, which is a little quiz. So, are you a yeah. foodie? Hmm. What's a foodie, Anika? So, if a person is a foodie, um, they are really into food um, and they know about food. I mean, um, hmm different types of food. They have a, probably a strong opinion about food as well. Yeah, yeah, it's like a hobby. Lots of opinions, lots of passion for food. Yeah, so do you want to read through this quiz? And in the yes. comments, please answer with A, B, or C. Okay, so let me read the... Okay, I'm just opening it on my slide here because it's bigger. So... Okay. Uh, take this short quiz about food. So we are going to test your knowledge about famous dishes here. So number one, ice cream was invented in A, China, B, Germany, C, Mexico. Number two, the English muffin was first baked in the USA, B, the, um, France, and C, England. Three, when carrots were first grown, they were A, orange, B, purple, C, green. <laughs> That's very weird. And number four, chocolate was first made by A, Belgians, B, Italians, C, Aztecs. And number five, French fries were created in A, Belgium, B, France, and C, England. Mm. Okay. Very good. So for the first one, Marta has a guess. She says, China. Yeah, I mean, certainly... Uh, of those three, I, I wouldn't think any. I mean, I always thought it would be Italy or somewhere like that. But, yeah, maybe it's China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, see. well, I already know the answer. So, but my first oh, no. thought when I first saw this question was uh, it Italy. Mm, yeah, but... It yeah. Oh, Marta. <laughs> Marta <laughs> researched... <laughs> You um, did research, to do research or to mm -hmm. research, not made, uh, about the history of ice cream when I was at elementary school, but I don't remember. It's a very long time ago, Marta. I think we can, we can forgive you for not remembering this. <laughs> and I think the second is not in England. It's a trick, the English muffin. It's either the USA or France. Hmm. I can't quite remember the answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some things like are named after a certain nation, but they're not originally from there. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, people have been talking about, uh, it's not a, a dish, but the, the yeah. Spanish flu from 100 years ago which mm -hmm. was a huge, it was like the coronavirus. It was killing mm -hmm. lots of people. There was quarantines. But it didn't come from Spain. They just called it the Spanish <laughs> flu, which was, I think, a bit offensive, really. <laughs> that they just said, this is from Spain. 
Hmm. Yeah, this thing, even if it originates somewhere, I think it's it's not good to uh, use that name for like a, a disease. Yeah, no. Uh -huh. Well, um, so if you guys know or whatever you guess, just take a guess and tell us what yeah. you think. Yeah, well, we have a look at the answers anyway and let people's guesses come in. Right. So, yes, China. Ice cream was invented in China. It was made by mixing rice and milk to create a syrup that was then frozen. Yeah. Rice ice cream, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, but then um, in Chinese restaurants, they serve a special type of ice cream. They do still serve... Um, rice ice cream i remember having something like that didn't know is it, it was the original nice as version italian though. Ice cream? i don't remember the taste to be honest <laughs> okay <laughs> it wasn't that memorable and the second one i was correct the english muffin was actually based baked in the usa before it was brought to england mm -hmm. so my my hunch was correct Hmm. Okay. Um, I think, um, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, I think the screen froze for a second there, but now it's fine. Okay. Okay. So number three here. What do you, so the answer, carrots were originally purple. The orange carrot was cultivated because it tasted much better than the purple variety. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Marta has an opinion about, about chocolate. Okay. Probably Belgians made chocolate. Hmm. No. Chocolate was originally made as a drink by Aztecs and Mayans from South America. Yeah, because the cocoa beans come from there originally. Oh, that's true, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And then what and this about this one? I, the I knew French, French fries, fries were created in Belgium, France. Yeah, mm. I think me too. Yeah, Although the Belgians are, French fries. are very annoyed about it, I think, because yeah. it's their, their invention. Um, mm. So Martha was thinking about chocolate bars and not chocolate the drink. Yeah, I'd say it was probably the Belgians. Hmm. who made the actual bar, or the Swiss. The Swiss are also very good at making chocolate. Um, oh, yeah. Just a note, when you, when you drink it in English, it's hot mm -hmm. chocolate. It's very important to say hot to make it a drink. This is the drink. And if you say chocolate on its own, it's the solid, it's bar of chocolate it's a piece of chocolate because often people students say i like i like drinking chocolate no i like drinking hot chocolate okay mm -hmm. so now we have an interesting paragraph about the history of pasta mm -hmm. so anika do you want to read this yeah, absolutely. So it's about a staple food. So before I begin, so we can talk about the word staple. Um, so a staple food for a nation is um, a food that is that people regularly have, um, like almost every day. So for Bangladesh, it's rice. Uh, for Italy, it's pasta. So what they say about it is as follows. 
Pasta is eaten all over the world, but where was it first eaten? When most people when most people think of pasta, it is immediately associated with Italy. But some would argue that pasta was in fact brought to Italy by Marco Polo in 1295 when he returned from China, when he returned from China. Before that, it had been eaten by the Chinese as early as 3000 BC. Ooh, what a surprise there. But when what but what the Chinese had created were um, were actually rice noodles. They were similar to pasta, but were made using using rice flour instead of wheat. Another popular theory is that pasta was introduced after Sicily had been invaded by Arabs in the 9th century AD. Wherever it came from, pasta has become a staple on tables around the world. Okay, now I think all the Italians are going, <laughs> oh my God, it's not Italian. <laughs> yeah. Hi. They can't believe it. It yeah. is very surprising. Yeah, I think it's I was also surprised the first time I read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's it's strange that Italy and China seem to have this this connection with ice cream and pasta, but and the coronavirus. But anyway. <laughs> So, we have to find mm -hmm. passives in the paragraph. What tense are they and mm -hmm. why are they passive? So, throughout this paragraph, we use passives. We use passives, I think, often. Well, there's two reasons why you would use a passive. When you don't know the subject, you don't know the person who did something, or it's not important. The focus is on the object. And here, and in general, when you talk about a signature dish, a staple food, the focus is on the food, it's on the object, it's on pasta. So we're not really focusing on who is making, who is cooking, who is doing all of these things. So in the comments, those of you who are still watching, try and find the passives. What tense are they and why are they passive? Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for some answers, uh, do you like to cook, Sean? Uh, I, yeah, but I'm not very good. It's mm. not, I'm not an expert. It's not a hobby, but mm. I enjoy it. I cook pretty much every day for myself. Mm. And, um, yeah, I like, I like to, I can't cook anything very complicated, anything very sophisticated. Mm. I can't bake. So we have baking oh. and cooking. Oh. Mm. Cooking would be preparing a, a dinner, a meal, whereas mm -hmm. baking is for bread or um, cakes or anything with flour and yeast. And Because for me, baking, you have to be quite precise. And um, whereas with cooking, you know, it's not such a big deal if something is too long or if, you know, the wrong amount of something is put in. How about you? Do you like do you like cooking or baking, Anika? I do like cooking uh, when I have some friends over, but somehow when I'm on my own, I'm like, you know, <laughs> don't feel like. It. <laughs> but when I have some people over, I love cooking or, or baking as well. Um, right. Some desserts like brownies and stuff. Oh yeah, brown brownies are good, but for me, I would... and they're easy to make. Yeah, I I think so, but for me, I just I think I would burn them or something. I don't know. <laughs> so Marta has come out with some answers here. So mm -hmm. pasta is eaten exactly the very first thing here. Pasta is eaten. What what tense is this, Anika? What passive is this? So this is a present tense passive. Okay, so we understand mm -hmm. that. 
from the verb to be. Yeah, so verb to be is is, which is in the present form, so it's passive. Okay, and exactly. then Marta here. Hmm. So Marta also says here, pasta was bought, brought. All right, so the past participle of bring. Good, this, that's another one. Another example of passive. Mm -hmm. There's also another was eaten. Was it first eaten? Oh, yes, was it first eaten? is eaten. immediately associated. Mm. There's a lot of them. <clears throat> and then brought. Very good. So the tenses change a little bit here, right? Yeah. So we have the present is with the past participle eaten associated mm -hmm. and then we have the past was eaten was brought so it's always the past participle with the passive and to be changes depending on the tense so is or was and then we have some more complicated ones uh, later on mm, yes absolutely mm -hmm. uh, Yes, Marta, were made using rice flour. Very good. Before that, we have a bit of a particular one. Had been eaten by the Chinese as early as 3000 BC. This is a past perfect passive. Mm -hmm. And the past perfect is a tense we always use to situate an, a completed action before another one in the past. It, we only use it when there's an, another event that we are placing it before. So before that, it had been eaten by the Chinese. So before it was brought to Italy, you're situating it before. Had been is the form, the past perfect. Had with the past participle. And to be, let me see, Marta seems to be getting all of them. Yes, we're made using rice flour. Then she also says pasta was introduced. Yeah, great. And then she also says Sicily had been invaded. Good job. So another mm. past perfect uh, passage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the past perfect is one we use a lot when we're talking about history in this way, to talk about the sequence of events. And finally, pasta has become a staple. And what tense is that one, Anika? So that is a present perfect tense. Mm -hmm. So we have the verb, auxiliary verb have. Mm -hmm. Since it's the third person singular, you say has become. In this case, you have mm -hmm. the subject with has and the past participle of the verb. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good job, Marta. Thank you for concentrating and staying with us. So now we're going to form questions about the previous paragraph. And these are passive questions. So I think I'll give the first one as an example. So which country associated pasta? Which country is often associated with pasta? So is associated a present passive? So try and um, complete the next ones with the prompts. Okay. And in the meantime, we can also discuss the answer to the questions, I guess. Yeah. Which country is often associated with pasta? <laughs> Which is obviously it's, Italy, it's yeah. Like I know um, in Germany, they have a different kind of pasta, which I think oh. is really d delicious. It's a kind of an egg noodle mm -hmm. called Spätzle. I think that's the name. 
I grew up with a German woman living beside us, and mm. I, I ate a lot of German cooking. Mm. Which Germany doesn't have a great reputation as a cuisine, but the mm. food in southern Germany is really delicious. I think it's really underrated. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I don't think I have tasted much German food. No, I mean, the stereotype mm. is about kind of sausages and things, but there's a lot of mm. kind of um, mm. different ways of cooking vegetables and um, spätzle. Mm. I would I would recommend spätzle. Spätzle? Yes, I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> is, is, that the, is that the type of pasta you were talking about? Yes, I think maybe it's this. Something like that. Spätzle. Oh, anyway. hmm. hey. So to give you guys a little hint, uh, we were talking about 3000 BC, so it's about the past. Oh, well done, Marta. Uh -huh. What food was created in the past by the Chinese? Yeah. Well That's done. exactly right, Marta. Great, great work on the passives from you today. Yeah. And so what was the answer to that? So in 3000 BC... It was pasta. <laughs> yeah, it was pasta. It was actually rice noodles which turned into pasta. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. They still have rice noodles, though. Have you ever had nice rice noodles, Sean? No. Do they taste like rice? Um, <laughs> They're like noodles, but, yeah, there's a little bit of rice flavor in it. And I think it's healthier, a little lighter oh. than okay. other types of pasta. So yes. uh, in Malaysia, for example, it was really popular, rice noodles. Yeah. You, you lived in Malaysia for a while, didn't you? Yeah, seven years. Mm. Is the I'm, cuisine good there? So there are different types of cuisines. There are um, the Malay cuisine, the Thai cuisine, okay. and the Chinese and Indian cuisine, all mixed up. Wherever you go, you have to choose from them. So I... Um, so I... For among all these four different cuisines, I really liked... Uh, Thai, and I think Thai was my favorite there, and okay. I really liked it. So you've lots of different groups making cuisines all together. Yeah, because it's like a very multicultural country, so yeah. there were all like different types of cuisine really popular everywhere. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So only fifty percent of the country was Malay Malay, and oh, everyone okay. else had a different culture. It's very interesting. Interesting for food, I think, when it's a mixture of populations. Yeah. yeah. So Marta is going onward. Where was pasta created? Excellent. Yeah. Which part of Italy was invaded by the Arabs? And where is where is pasta? There's no need for for the um, the article. The it's it's you know it's generic. It's not a specific pasta. It's just in general pasta. So we don't need to say that. Yeah. Okay. Great work. Great work. So use passives to retell the story of a famous dish to the group. So we were looking at pasta. Pasta is dried to keep it fresh. Pasta has been spread all over the world. Pasta was not created in China. Pasta had been eaten in Italy before Marco Polo returned from China. So those are different tenses, all passives. To tell the story of pasta, this time they're arguing it's not invented in China. They've changed their mind. So why don't we uh, try and uh, give the history of a, a famous dish that we know? And in the comments, can Marta or anyone else who's watching try and do the same? Just pick one or two tenses and give some sample sentences. Okay? 
So tell us the story of a famous dish using hussives. Um, I'm trying to think of a dish that I, I know the history of. Mm, me too. I think I, I know the history of the pizza margarita. Oh, yeah. Let me try and make some passive sentences, though. So, pizza margarita was named, was named in mm -hmm. honor of either Queen or Princess Margarita, who oh. was the Queen or the Princess of Italy. Mm -hmm. And to honor, it was invented in Naples um, around the time of Italian unification. So to honor the Queen and the new Republic, the new country, they used ingredients were used that were the colors of the Italian flag. So they used mozzarella, which was white, tomato sauce, which was red, and oregano, which was green, mm. to create the, the pizza margarita, which was the Italian flag. And it has since become the, the most common kind of pizza, the classic type of pizza. I hope I didn't get the story wrong in case there are any mm. Neapolitans. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know they take pizza very, very seriously there. <laughs> Can you yeah. think of any other dishes, Anika? Um, I've been wondering. I don't, I'm not sure if I know a history of, of food like that. Um, not really coming to me at the moment, to be honest. But I think I have heard about the the whole margarita thing that you talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. How about <laughs> on um, like a special holiday or occasion in mm -hmm. um, in Bangladesh in your culture? So, is there yeah. are there certain foods that are eaten by everyone that are well, prepared? Well, um, okay, um, I can talk about a food that is famous to eat. Uh, during New Year, like we have a special New Year, Bangladeshi New Year, which was a few days ago, actually, last week. Oh, and... Happy New Year, Anika. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, so we're in 1427 right now. <laughs> it's not 2020 for us. Yes. So, uh, yeah. And everybody dress up in, um, dresses up in uh, white and red. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Just a woman <laughs> dressed up in white and red saris, usually, and men in white, like a special type of kind of clothing. Mm -hmm. And um, we go to this park, really famous park in Taka, the capital of Bangladesh, and we eat fish and rice. <laughs> As always. <laughs> yes. That's like the traditional, like the basic food. But I have never done it, and I would like to do it at least once in my life. <laughs> but everyone goes to the same park. It must be really busy. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it gets really crowded, and that's the reason why my grandmother never let us go there. She said it's too crowded, it's too dangerous. You better stay at home, young lady. Okay. <laughs> so you were you were at home eating fish and rice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but then I would go out with other friends, um, having uh, I don't know, having fun other places. I wasn't allowed to go there but just because it was really crowded. And my mm. grandmother was overprotective. Okay. <laughs> so we so, have some comments here. Mm -hmm. So Marta has given an example that is not a famous dish. It's a historical event, I think, mm -hmm. which is great. Please tell us about history. Use passives to tell us about anything you want to. So mm -hmm. Mozart's Mozart's ball, I'm going to say, um, was, interestingly, we would use the verb held, to hold, to hold a ball, to mm -hmm. have a ball happen on a certain day. We don't use made in this context in English. 
Mozart's ball was held in Salzburg in Austria to celebrate the famous musician. Very good, exactly. It was held. We don't know who, who exactly did it. The ball is more significant. And then we have another example about food. Anika, do you want to read this one? So, yeah, so she says 5A5. Maybe it's, if it's an Italian food, maybe Cinque Cinque is typical, is atypical street food in Livorno. It's made of bread and cecina. If I'm not wrong, is that chickpeas? Yeah, so chickpea flour, I guess. Chickpea flour, okay. Yeah, we'll just write chickpea in the comments. Okay. So, oh, interesting. Livorno, um, if I'm not wrong, it's in, in near the mountains, isn't it? Like near Bormio? Uh, it's in Tuscany on the coast. Oh, okay. So I mixed up the names with something else. Okay. In Italy, like there's lots of places with the same name. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever have you ever had this food before, Sean? No. I mean, the thing about Italy is everywhere has a different kind of bread. It's mm. it's amazing. No two cities have the same bread. Mm -hmm. I cannot keep track. Um, my my father is Italian and he comes mm -hmm. from Ravenna, which is in Emilia Romagna. And there they eat a piadina, mm -hmm. which is, I think, really, really good. It's like a pizza bread, kind of. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Marta here also says the name is Five and Five Cinque Cinque because to buy it, you pay five lira liras i think in english would be liras for the bread and five liras for the the chickpeas i guess mm. oh interesting um that reminds me i heard that in tuscany they have a type of bread that uh, where uh they don't use salt at all it's a special type of bread i mean historically i think um there was a lack of salt at some point oh. for some reason i can't remember why yeah. and so they started making it and they continued to make it <laughs> Yeah, a lot of um, Italian dishes are mm. they're really good, but they come from people not having enough things. Mm. Um, I read that, um, you know, a matriciana, pasta a matriciana. Yeah, of course. Huh? It was eaten in the mountains by um, people who had um, goats, I think, mm -hmm. or, or sheep. I think sheep, because they make pecorino romano from sheep. Mm -hmm. So all they had were, you know, the tomatoes with the tomato sauce, uh, mm -hmm. pecorino, the cheese, and then the the guanciale mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. to make a matriciana, and that was it. That was how it was invented. Oh. That, was, that was all they had. Wow! <laughs> but it, it's really good, you know. It's really particular. It really it, is. It was invented sort of by accident. Mm. Yeah, that's what I love about Italian food. It's not so complex, like mm, with thousands of spices, <laughs> but it's like yeah. the combination makes sense. Yeah, but Italians can be, I think, very particular about about food and what foods mm. you can eat together and not eat together. I think maybe sometimes a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. also the drinks that go with the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As, as foreigners in Italy, you can wind up being very judged in some situations if you don't do what's expected. <laughs> yeah, you're always going to learn. <laughs> yeah. So we're coming to the end of uh, the webinar. Um, some great participation at the beginning from a few people and Marta all the way through to the end. So thank you for that. Just uh, quickly going through what we talked about. So just uh, the different kinds of passives, present, present perfect, past and past perfect. The thing that's always the same is the past participle and then to be changes according to which tense you use. It's it's not that tricky. You just it's it gets complicated when there's several auxiliaries, like with past perfect or something like this. But generally speaking, I think it's it's quite manageable. And just we were talking a little bit some general vocabulary and discussion about food. Anything to add, Anika? 
Um, I think you said it all. Um, yeah, just keep practicing, guys. And uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for your participation. Thank you for being here. Have a good dinner. I'm quite hungry now myself. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, have okay. a good dinner. Bye. Bye.